What is good guys, we are back with the deciding game 3 for OST round 7 between Ultra Balls and Matter of the Dark. UB is using a team that's sorry in the tournament, it's like Knock of Taunt, Roost, Earthquake, Gliscor, Standard, Rock, CM, Clef. 3 attacks, Ice Beam, Draco, HP, Fire, Megalari with Roost, Scarf, Tita, Standard, Ferrothorn with Spikes and then Payapa, Toxic, Toxapex. On the other side we see Voltorn, I think that TDK made, it's like Shuka Coco. AV Bulu, um, SD Sis with either U-turn or knockoff, I don't remember exactly. Probably Scarf Lando, Rox Tran, and then either Bandit or Z-Move Hooper. We see Clefable vs. Coco lead, um, UB has two options, it's either go hard into Ferrothorn or stay in and go for Rox. Matter's play is probably just Volt Switch, because UB is never gonna go Gliscor, because he needs the Gliscor healthy to switch in the Heatran. Yeah, so like, I agree with going Ferrothorn, because uh, cl having Clef health is pretty important for the Hooper. Now either the Hooper or the Heatran can come out to force the Ferro out. Uh, Heatran pretty much forces you to go on the Gliscor. If this has will o -Wisp or Lava Plum, he can go for it to try to burn the Gliscor before the orb gets activated, but he didn't see when for rocks. I think he's most likely just a Magma Storm variant. So now either the Scissor or the Boodle is gonna come out. Um, I think UB should just attack because he doesn't have a double that covers all options. Like if he doubled to Packstep predicting the Scissor, that would not have covered the Boodle. If he doubled to Ladi predicting the Boodle, that would have not covered the Scissor. So I agree with just attacking and he was able to get rid of the AV. Now Mata is most likely just gonna go for Nature's Madness. UB goes in the Mega Ladi, uh, it pretty much just walls the Boodle and this Mega Horn, and yeah, UB can Mega here, go for Roost. Uh, his opponent has a free switch into either Scissor or Hooper here. Just Mega in the light, he gets the extra bulk. And yeah, Scissor pretty much forces him to go into Toxapex. Now we will see if it's a U-turn or a knockoff variant, the Scissor. So we see it's knockoff, and he's able to knock off the Payapa. So now UB can throw off a Scald. Um, potential plays here are Coco, Heatran, or if the Hooper is a special attacking variant, even Hooper could come out here. So he goes in the Heatran, um, which just means he doesn't want um, Coco or Hooper to get burned. So now UB can just go back into his Gliscor. This is most likely Madden Storm variant, like I said earlier already, he didn't go for Lava Plume trying to burn the Gliscor. And he brought it in on Pex, which means he could have Madden Storm trapped the Pex. So yeah, obviously switching to Gliscor was always the play. Now UB can go for Roost here, right? Um, because he needs to keep the Glisco half for the switch in the Heatran multiple times. His opponent gets another switch in here into Bulo, Scizor, maybe even Lando, but I assume Scizor or Bulo is gonna come out. So, yeah, we, you know, you guys can see this a little bit repetitive. When Bulo comes out, every time UB is forced into Ladi. When Scizor comes out, um, he has the packs to wall that. So, Nature's Madness gets thrown off and connects, so UB is probably just gonna roost again. This gives him a switch in into either Scizor or Hooper. Hooper comes out. Now, UB should go in the Clefable. Um, having Clef at full is just good, um, which is why I like that he didn't let it take a Volt Switch turn one from Coco, because then he can now he can scout if the Hooper is physical or special. And we see it's Nasty Plot Hooper, okay. So this is most likely Dark Kingdom Z is what I'm thinking, this is Nasty Plot, I think that's the most common set with Z, it could also be all out pummeling. So, but it's gonna be Psychic, Dark Pulse, and Focus Blast. So the thing is, he's just gonna Psychic here. Um, UB could go hard into Tita, because his opponent um, doesn't know that the Tita has Choice Scarf. His opponent probably thinks the Tita has Bandit. So the opponent thinks he can just click Psychic here, and even if the Tita comes out, then he could just kill it the next turn. But he obviously doesn't know that the Tita has Scarf. So I agree with going Tita. If his opponent knew the team there, he would've been screwed, but yeah, he doesn't. Okay, now even his opponent should know that the Tita has Scarf, because it got grass terrain before the Hooper. Um, but I assume Edge is overall the play for UB, just in case his opponent stays in. And he misses the Edge, that sucks a lot, because getting rid of Hooper would have been amazing. But thankfully, he also dodges the Focus Blast. This is still hacks, in my opinion, um, because Hooper would have been dead, and UB would have been in a fantastic position. But now his opponent can switch out um, into Mega Scissor or Lando to take the Stone Edge. And the Hooper pretty much escapes. Um, UB is obviously locked into Edge, he can't pursue this or anything. Um... Cause like, his Gliscor was the Heatran, his Pex was the Scissor, his Ladi was the Bulu, his Ferro plus Ladi, um, if the La Coco is lacking Devon Gleam, Ladi and Ferro both walled the Coco. So like, everything would have been walled, Land Scarf Land was not a big threat, and so like, UB would have been in a fantastic position if Uber died there. But now UB is forced out, he's locked in the Stone Edge, it doesn't do much to Scissor as you guys can see. Um, Pex is the obvious place, so we could see a double into Heatran or Coco happening um, from Matter. UB goes on the clef and his opponent doubles in the coco. If UB predicted that coco, that was a fire play from him because he knows um, he can take a volt switch from this. Um, he knows the coco set is it's probably not spikes from the damage that we saw turn one on the ferro, right? I'm thinking it's sugar at least. That's from what I remember. So now UB can stay in here and get his rocks up because um, getting rocks up to chip down the opposing team is amazing. So volt switch in the heatran, pretty obvious. 
Um, Glisco is gonna come out here, so Mada is either gonna Madness Domagon or double. A double into either Bulu or Scizor. But then again, that doesn't really gain him that much. And. Like, UB had this game wrapped up if he just connected the Stone Age on the Hooper, but he's still in an okay position now. So his opponent doubles in the Bulo Plate in the Gliscor. Now, um, this forces UB to go on to Ladi. So, um, Mada is probably gonna go for Nature's Madness again. And he does miss, okay. So now UB can just go for Ice Beam here. Uh, either Hooper or Scissor is gonna come out. Uh, Heatran is also an option, but he doesn't know the set. So this is HP Fire Ladi, which is gonna be able to potentially cook the Scissor here if his opponent doesn't scout, and he doesn't scout, so cool. Getting rid of Scissor is amazing. Um, now Hooper comes out. So UB has two plays here, right? He can either sack the Toxapex or the Clefable. Um, because since the Scissor just died, the Toxapex now is not necessary anymore to win the game. Because the, the only Mon that the Pex guaranteed walled was the Scissor. But yeah, Clef is also a bit weakened, so it's between Clef and Pex what you want to sack here. But yeah, um, his opponent didn't know that the Sladi is Draco Ice Beam HP Fire. If he knew that exact set, he probably would have gone to Heatran instead of Scizor. But yeah, the set has some cool lures. HP Fire and Ladi coming through, Scarf, Tita. Would have came through earlier if his opponent didn't dodge the edge. Um, I mean, Clef doesn't do that much besides checking Scarf Lando, so he does go Clef. His opponent tries to focus by breaking the hard Tita, but UB is obviously not gonna go hard in the Tita. He's either gonna sack Clef or Pex. So his opponent is now gonna Psychic. Um, yeah, exactly. Just knowing that UB is probably gonna sack this. If UB went hard Tita, that would have been wild, but there's no reason to risk that. So UB should just edge again. Because, like, pursuing is just not worth it if the opponent stays in. And now that Scizor is dead, he has like no good edge switch in. That's why HP Fire luring the Scizor was so good for him. I, uh, I guess he can go into Bulu or Landris. I would probably go into Landris because it has the Intimidate and can probably take the Stone Edge somewhat okay with um, if it's Bulky Scarf Lando. But yeah, he obviously doesn't want to stay in here with the Hooper. Because the Hooper kind of um, just gets a kill every time it comes in versus the Toxapex, Ladi or Ferrothorn. Well, if the Hooper gets chipped a little bit more, then the Ladi can kill it with Draco, I guess. That's also why um, Rock's up is cool for UB. But yeah, the, the play is just so much here. Like, if Hooper stays in, you kill it, and if something switches in, it just still takes good damage. He just has to connect this, and then he's pretty much fine, I think. So, Bulu does come out. This sh should take like 40 50 from Edge. 50 ish? 47, okay. Um, so yeah, UB can just click Edge again. <laughs> this is a 2 hit KO. So, his opponent now realizes that and goes Landris. Like, I, th I think he should have gone Landris first. And yeah, UB doesn't want to stay in here. The play is probably Glisco. Yeah, so unless it's opponent HP, I think this works out well. He just U turns. Now, um, the Bulu is weakened, which is also amazing for the Glisco. Like, UB has like a lot of months that go in after a specific mon on the opposing team is removed. A Scissor being removed is like one mon that cannot, that doesn't stop Glisco anymore. And um, Bulu being weakened is also amazing. But yeah, at this point, um, I think. Toxapex is the sack to make. And since Bulu is weakened and Lando also took that edge, um, Tita pretty much gets a kill um, after he sacks the something here. I think Pex is the sack because you still want the Glisco around for the Heatran. If you sack Glisco, then Heatran um, becomes a huge problem because the Ladi does not have Surf or anything to hit the Heatran. So he definitely can't stay in here. Um, I guess if he's. Um, yeah. Like some Glisco speed creep Hooper and out so they're gonna outspeed it, right? But this Glisco doesn't, I think. And yeah, Pex is like not needed. Like Pex doesn't do much at all, so I definitely just sack it here. Like earlier it was a toss up between Clef and Pex, but now you have pretty much no option. Uh, the Pharaoh is like still valuable, it can get up spikes, it can potentially knock off some items, it can leech sheet and be annoying, but Pex just pretty much loses to almost everything, so it's definitely the sack to make here. Like I said, you cannot afford to uh, lose the Glisco, because the Mihidron becomes oh, way too much of a problem. So Pex comes out as he goes for hard Z move. Um, I guess he did that in case his opponent, in case he tried to go hard into Titar, and he still hit that hard. But yeah, um, now he's probably just gonna click Dark Pulse. And yeah, it's just not worth it to go hard into Tita here, because you take... 
like letting T-Tiger weaken is not the not the move to make, because <laughs> Scarf Dog can actually just clean this game soon, which is crazy. Yes, T does the play here, and you just yeah, I think you just edge again, and I mean if Crunch kills, you can also go for that, but edge is um, overall better because Crunch would potentially let something like Coco in. Like edge is just overall hits everything neutral. With Scissor down, Lando already took an edge and has it, like, Lando can barely take another one. So I think his opponent is kind of forced to stay in here, or has to go Lando or Sack Bull. But he stays in and UB pops to Hooper, so his opponent um, probably tried to break the pursuit there. Crunch might have been a roll, I'm not exactly sure. But yeah, Lando gets a U-turn here, and Farrowson comes out, which is completely fine play. He HPIs is there, trying to catch the Glyph score. And yeah, now UB gets up a spike, he got rid of the Hooper, and now I don't think UB can lose this. Um, he pretty much has all the momentum on his side now that the Hooper is dead because Gliscor was Keychan, Ferrothorn was Coco, Ladi was Bulu, and Scarf Lando is not the biggest threat. It can be kept in check. Like, it cannot really lock into a move that hits everything. So, I'll never see UB losing this at this point. He can just roost here. The Coco does come out. Takes some juicy hazard. Sandstorm is gonna end here. So yeah, I would just go Ferrothorn, even if he breaks that in Volt Switch, it's just not, the big, not a big deal at all. So he does break that, so he's gonna get a switch into his Heatran. And yeah, Gliscor is gonna have to come out again. Heatran gets chipped from the hazards a little bit. And yeah, Toxic or Poison Heal is just amazing here, because it, um, it makes it so that you just heal back what you, the 12% that you take from rocks, and you can just roost. Coco comes back out. I mean, um... This Glisco can live a HPS, but I would still just go into Ferrothorn. I don't think it's worth it to let the Glisco take a HPS. So let's just go Ferrothorn. The opponent goes for Roost. Um, this gives you B um, whatever he wants. He can either Spike, Knock Off, Leech Sheet. Uh, I think Knock Off is a fine play because you get potentially rid of Heatran's leftovers here. Yep. And this puts him in a fire position. And now, I mean, after Hooper died, he was pretty much in a great position. So yeah, he just goes back into Glisco, I assume. His opponent doubles into Coco breaking that. I mean, we haven't seen it yet, but it's just obvious that the Glisco has to come out. And now, yeah, I would just go back into Ferrothorn. He does stay in um, to probably go for Earthquake. Yeah, I don't like that play. He does get a crit there. And the, even the crit doesn't kill Sushuka. So yeah, he's probably just going to go Ferrothorn now. His opponent is most likely going to roost. Yeah, breaking the Ferrothorn there. And now he can Volt Switch. Now the thing is, the TT is okay. He's going for full Parahex, I guess. Yeah, just leeching is cool there. Because even if Bulu comes out to block the leech sheet, then you get leftovers post grass terrain back. So I assume he went for Spike or Power Whip here. Spike seems like a fine play. Just Whips, also fine play. Because Heatran, um, super low already. Like, Spikes only hit Tren and um, Coco. But yeah, Heatran comes out. So now, he can sack the Ladi at this point. Yo, Hati does also a fine play. I was gonna say, he doesn't need the Ladi anymore because... Um, but yeah, Hatita was a perfectly fine play. I forgot that Tita was still somewhat healthy. I thought it was like super low. And now you can just click Crunch or Edge. Yeah, Crunch, exactly. Because everything was weakened, right? So Lando has to come out here and... I think Ladi is probably... He just stays in. And it doesn't even kill because of the rain hot. So yeah, Crunch picks up the Landrus and now... You, um... Yeah, you just win with your Feral Thorn. So congrats to UB for reaching round 8 of... OST, which is, I think, top 16. Um, yeah, he would have had this game locked up way earlier if he just hit the edge on the hoop bar. This made it a bit closer, but then later in the game, he thankfully hit the deciding edge versus the hooper. And he wins the best of three. Two and one. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Smash that like button if you enjoyed, and stay tuned for more content.